Hi, I'm Mark with Macroscopic Solutions, and today's tutorial is going to be about setting up the Macropod Pro 3D, uh, but this time using the vertical stand. So we're going to have the Macropod pointing down in case we want to use the petrographic analyzer, or if we want to image larger slabs of rock uh, that you wouldn't be able to fit on the Macropod using its horizontal configuration. So to do that, with the vertical stand, what we do is we have this heavy iron base, and it's, it is heavy for one reason, that's because copy stands and any other vertical setups carry a lot of vibration. So for us, we want something that's really, really heavy and really, really sturdy so that it cuts down on that vibration uh, whenever we're focus stacking through an object that's pointing down. So what we've done is we've gotten a 20 pound base um, we are soon to come out with one that's going to be half the weight and half the size just in case you still want, um, let's say, the portability of having the whole Macropod being able to put that into a book bag and take it with you abroad. Uh, so you'll still have a vertical base that's going to be half half the weight and half the size that, in case you need it. Um, and we'll be coming out with that just this, this next month. But in terms of, of photographing larger samples or using the petrographic analyzer in a lab and you're not going to move it very much, this is the base you want just because it is so much more heavier. It gives you that much more of a robust system. So to first start by setting up this base, what we're going to do is we're just going to take this stainless steel rod and you're just going to thread it directly into the nut that's on the base. And once it's tight, the next thing you're going to do is just hand tighten the bolt. That's all you need to do. And then you've got a really, really solid, solid base that moves basically with my whole desk. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to take the tripod. You're going to extend the back arms all the way to the 90 degree position. Same with the front leg. And you're just going to slide out the arm. You're not even going to need this. You're just going to set it aside. And what will happen is this tripod is essentially going to slide directly down right over top the stainless steel and you just want to elevate it that way you keep a good working distance between your sample and where you're going to have your camera now you can set you set your camera up in a few locations one is you can set your camera up and the base up here or you can set it up down here um, there's two different configurations depending on whether or not you're using the petrographic analyzer or if you're using it just to focus stack a large slab of rock uh, in this setup what we're going to be doing is is setting it up so that we can photograph a large slab of rock so what we're going to do for that, that purpose is we're going to have our camera oriented down here. And I'll show you what we're going to do. The next thing that's a useful trick just to further stabilize the entire setup, it's already quite stable, but you can actually bend these legs back to the 30 degree position, click them out, and then you can brace it against the, up the wall up here. And that way you've got a really solid sturdy base that, that's not going to carry a lot of vibration. So once you have that set up, the next thing to do is to take the standard adapter plate and we're just going to mount it directly through the bottom. Because everything's vertical, the camera itself, there's always the potential that it could slide out and fall and hit the base and you don't ever want that to happen. So it's really good to make sure that every time you, you screw an adapter plate in on this using this, this setup to make sure it's extra, extra tight. And the other thing you can do is even take this and slide it down so that it clicks and connects with that thread that you just you just placed through the adapter bracket. And you can continue to, to, you have a lot of flexibility here. You can actually slide this whole system closer or longer or further away, depending on the working distance that you're going to require uh, when you photograph. <laughs> now, there's two lenses that you can use that come with the system. There's the 100 millimeter and there's the MPE 65. If you're shooting samples smaller than four centimeters, in which case I will be today, you're going to be using the MPE 65. And if you're shooting samples that are larger than four centimeters, up to let's say 10 inches in diameter, then you're going to want to use the 100 millimeter. But like I said, we're gonna use the MPE 65, so I'm gonna put that one to the side. So that's basically gonna be situated here. The next thing we're gonna do is notice on the, the, the uh, stack shot controller here, I took the adapter plate that would you, you would use to mount a, a camera directly onto. Now you can do one of two things. One is you can actually screw this directly into your lens, or you can actually add an adapter bracket so you have a little bit more flexibility in the lens itself, in which case I'm gonna do. So this adapter bracket is different than the one that carries on the X and Y stage that comes with the system, but it's included in every pack uh, who, every, so every customer does have one of these. And also with it, it comes with this added 
this added screw, which is basically a standard standard tripod screw. It allows you to uh, basically mount the camera directly to a tripod. So it looks like this. You can see it's a little bit, uh, the, the outer diameter is shorter than where the threaded area is. You're just gonna have that and you're gonna position it directly through, through that plate. The next thing you can do is you can actually take this adapter plate off and you can use it on this surface if you didn't want to just directly mount the lens to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this adapter plate off, both screws, we're going to take that adapter, adapter plate and we're just going to position it on that stage. And then what you're going to do is just screw it through using that same screw. Make sure it's extra tight and one thing you can do to make sure it's extra tight is just kind of set it so it's a little cockeyed put your hand on it and then grab it by the handle and just twist it so it's super tight until that edge is squarely aligned so it's facing straight down once you've done that you've got a it might even take two hands but once you've done that you've got a really firm base and the camera is not going to move around on you too much so what i'm going to do is just continue to make this thing as tight as i can possibly get it and that's all it takes. You don't need you don't need too much. I mean, you're not strapping on 100 pounds. You're only strapping on the camera, so you only really need one screw in this, and that's going to be a really really solid platform for your your camera. So what we're going to do then is we're going to take this and we're going to slide it directly into this adapter. And again, make sure you use a lot of force. Make sure that this is extra tight, just because we're going to put a, put some weight on this, and you want this to be really really sturdy and snug. So just make sure that that, that knob is really tight. Now every single lens, mine doesn't have them just because I'm used to handling them, but there are two screws that do fit into the bottom of this adapter bracket. That way if you have it in here in its vertical orientation, it'll slide and catch. So that way if you're just never bracing it and it slides out on you, it'll catch it loosely. So it's just an added safety mechanism. So if you're, if you're not confident about grabbing it, you want those two screws in there. Uh, you can see that on this lens here, I do have those two screws in. So basically I'll just show you an example. Basically, I'd, I'd set this in, and let's say I've got it up to about here, and then I go ahead and I unloosen it, and I forget to grab it. What'll happen is it'll slide down and catch it. And then, but if you take those screws out, you lose that safety. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this lens here, straight into that adapter bracket, and the next step is to add the camera. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the camera body and take the camera lens. Remember, be very fast with the lens cap. You don't want dust getting in here. Yep. And then you just wanna tighten that through. The next thing is you wanna use the flash. And the flash, you're, this time you're actually gonna use the MT-2040X ring that came with your flash system. So what you're gonna end up doing is you're just gonna mount this directly onto the front of your lens. And you're gonna take your flash and those adapter plates that we custom build for the bottom of these, you're going to remove those so that these slide directly into that ring. So this is just going to slide directly into your camera body. You're going to loosely, loosely secure it. And then you're going to take each of these flash heads and you're going to slide them until they clip into that ring. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to take the turtle dove diffusers that we make and gave you with the system. These are already set up and ready to go for your need needs, but there is one thing that we've learned that, that gives you a little bit less harsh light. So let's say you are still getting a lot of glare when you're using these. One thing you can do is sort of mimic uh, what Mylar would do if you shoot through it. And you can do that by just taking standard scotch tape. So I just have some tape here and you cut it down to size. And if you just paste it right here, there's a layer of scotch tape in there. And that diffuses light even more. It's quite effective. So if you do have these, you purchased these from us, try taking a piece of scotch tape and just stick it in, in the base here because it does a really good job of diffusing light. So then what you're gonna do, you're just gonna mount those directly onto the front of these, uh, these flash heads. They're all ready to go. And now all that's left is to take the stack shot and set up all of your cables. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your x-axis with the motor cable. You're just going to plug it in to that port. And then you're going to plug that into the stack shot. Then you're going to take your cable that allows you to connect the camera to the stack shot 
and you're just going to drape it over the back. That way it's not getting in the way of your sample. There we go. Then you want to take your USB cord and you want to plug that into your camera body. And then you want to take your battery and you want to plug that back into the back of the camera. And that is all you need to do to set up your vertical orientation. So now you can focus stack large surfaces. So let's just say I had a, let's say that this was my slab of rock. Now I can actually place, paste this down here and I can photograph downward in, in a downward sense and photograph larger samples as well. So again, with the one to five X, we still have that flexible range. And then you can also move, in addition to moving the lens, and again, remember, always secure the camera when you're gonna do this adjustment, but if you had to move it closer, you can just loosen up the adapter bracket here, and you can slide it down to decrease or increase your working distance. And you can also increase or decrease your working distance by, by basically repositioning where the tripod is on the stainless steel rod. After that, um, you're good to go. You're going to do all the same focus stacking techniques that you've done using the horizontal configuration, but this time uh, your lighting is already going to be pre-configured. You don't have to worry about blocking out or canceling light. You could get clever or creative if you wanted to, but then after that you're just going to be driving the camera itself. So this time you're moving the camera relative to your subject still, uh, but this time your camera's mounted on the actual stack shot rail. So that would be how you set up the Macropod Pro using the vertical stage. I hope this has been helpful to you. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below or just contact us at info at macroscopicsolutions.com.